where would you rather be than Raleigh, North Carolina for V Week? Hey, everyone, and welcome to NC State. It's time for the Wolfpack against the South Florida Bulls. Hey, everyone. I'm Ben Schulman alongside the Hall of Famer, Debbie Antonelli. And look, it's an unranked South Florida team against the top 10 NC State, but this is a really tough non-conference game for the Pack. Look, this South Florida team is built to come in here and win. They've got great balance. They've got size on the inside. They've played a challenging non-conference schedule. They're ready for this in a top 10 environment, and they are led on the inside and anchored by Dulce Fanka Menjiadu. She is a 6'4", long, athletic, very good player in her role, and her top role is to rebound and to bury defenders in the paint. She can score inside with her left or her right. She's got size, and she is strong around the rim. She's a tough check for most opponents. On the other side, it's the point guard, Diamond Johnson, who leads the team in scoring. Diamond can make every shot. She can shoot with range. She can get in the paint where she's really improved her skill set is understanding the three W's. Who to get the ball to, when and where. She's become a fantastic distributor in an up-tempo pace where she's making good decisions with the basketball, and that helps NC State play with tremendous balance on the offensive end. Johnson, the sixth player of the year last year, now in a starting role, but it'll be USF that starts with the basketball. Here's Elena Chineke. She will run a lot of the offense today. Gets it right back on the right wing. Chineke driving to the hole. Double team. Kick out three from Carla Brito. Good. Brito hit all three of her shots. The first year player in her last game. She has a big role for this USF team. Well, this is a really good South Florida team that is receiving votes. I've had them in my preseason poll and every week except for one because I think they're that good on the offensive end. On the other side, Mimi Collins gets her second straight start. Here's a three from the left wing. That's good for Diamond Johnson, who only hit two of her 11 attempts in the last game. Big to get her going early. Here are the starters for South Florida. We mentioned Dulce Fanka Mengiadu. Sammy Puisis, too, transfer from Florida State, should factor in a lot today. This is a Flo South Florida team that is very good in transition. They advance past the ball. Their guards rebound and get them up tempo. And right away, NC State's playing one-on-one -on -one in the post in this matchup with Dulce Franklin, Mengiadu, and she delivers. And she's going to be a big key to the game today, right? She's a huge key, Ben, because she can score in a matchup with any player on the front line of NC State. Diamond Johnson missed the layup a little bit short. Ariel Wilson, about as pure of a point guard as you're going to see, only averaging two points, but five assists per game. Her three is no good. Offensive board. Rito had the first bucket. She puts up a wild shot with the left and misses. And Camille Hobby does a great job on the weak side. You have to put a body on Menjiadu. She is too long and athletic. She will tip it back. She's got beast-like skills around the rim. Long two for Hobby. That's good. Jacksonville, Florida native, a senior, soon to graduate. Back and forth early on from two teams coming off pretty solid wins. USF just beat ranked Texas in Austin. And this matchup right here for NC State challenging to guard Sammy Puisis. That's why. She is a three-point threat, but Jose Fernandez, the head coach, will run a lot of sets for her, and she is fantastic off of every screening action. What you want to do, Ben, is make her put the ball on the floor and make her try to dribble into her shots. If she catch and shoots, she's going to be uh, too dangerous for NC State. Coming over as the leading three-point maker for Florida State the last three years. Pass inside, gets away from Hobby. That's a turnover. Pieces has been working on her game off the bounce, though. Fernandez talked about how she's evolved at least to make it a part of her game, whereas at Florida State, over 75% of her shots were three-pointers. Well, she's changed her body. She has a different role on this team. She was a high school All-American, and they use her coming off of multiple screening actions. Here she is. Madison Hayes has got that assignment. You've got to get your hands off. And they whistle Jakia Brown Turner on that one. Rather, Madison Hayes picks up the foul. Westmore 
fifth in active wins in the country. He is an excellent play caller, as well as Jose Fernandez. These are two of the best in the game. Both coaches have spent a ton of time at these programs, and that's an illegal screen. Going to turn it over back to NC State. For more, his 10th season with the Pack. For Fernandez, his 23rd season with USF. Jose is one of the good guys. I mean, he's had incredible success. He takes teams to the postseason, 16 of his last 17 years. They've only missed it once. Jaquia Brown Turner with the miss. Chineke gets the board. USF pushed a ton against Texas last time. Spinning lefty shot, no good. Offensive board, second chance is off the mark, and the pack get the board. This could be an up and down game. I know South Florida doesn't like to use the shot clock very often. Who do you think the up tempo would benefit? Well, I think both teams are very capable in scoring. Obviously, you want to make shots on the road. That's so important. Hobby around Fanka Mengiani, no good. USF pushing the pace again. Brito already hit a three. She fakes the handoff, open lane to the hoop, but she missed the layup. Fanka Mengiani, second chance, no good. You want to make shots on the road, two possessions in the row, USF has missed layups. Johnson step back. A little bit off the mark, Precious with the board. 50-foot pass to Chineke. Native of Thessaloniki, Greece. Pulls up with a hand in her face. No good. Chineke is 0 for 3 to start the game. There's that advanced passing that I'm talking about. It forces your defense to get back, and it creates mismatches when you sprint the floor that hard. Hobby steps around and scores this time. Tie game at 7. And one of the things you want to do against... Menji Adu is trying to make her defend, pull her away from the bucket, and because Camille Hobby's first bucket was from 15, you're forcing her to have to run and defend other actions. Voices around a fan come Menji Adu's screen. Thought she had a roll there, but the pass went awry. It's going back to NC State. Second turnover quickly here for South Florida. Halfway through the first quarter, both of these teams have seemed pretty even early on. I don't think NC State has to worry about not getting Jaquita Brown Turner going early. I mean, I think it's a factor right here because she didn't score in the last game, so you might want to run something for her right there. It's a good play call by Westmore to get her going early. First lead for the Wolfpack on the first field goal in a couple games for Jaquia Brown Turner. Like you mentioned, she had six points but went 0 for 4 from the field in the last game for the Pack. Wilson spins, puts it up, and misses. She didn't even attempt to field goal last game, but gets her own rebound. Rito has to put it up. She does. And it's off the mark and into Wolfpack hands. No, held ball, but that will go to NC State. Back and forth early on between this top 10 team and a hungry mid-major here from Raleigh. The South Florida Bulls, the top team preseason in the AAC because of this three-headed monster. Yeah, Ben, this is a good group right here. This is why you can take a team on the road in a top 10 environment and be able to win. you got excellent guard play, and you've got rebounding to play the tempo that you want to play. And on the other side for Westmore, NC State has 10 players, or all, all the players on the roster have scored 10 points or more. There's 10 players, and Jada Boyd is not one of them today. She's out with an ankle injury again for the second game in a row. Mimi Collins has the ball. She's the replacement in the starting lineup and sticks that mid-range jumper to get the lead up to four. She was phenomenal, 19 points in the last game. That's the first time she scored in double figures against Georgia, and I think she's going to be a really important part of NC State being able to win in the ACC. Weiss just pulls up with a hand in her face. No. Ball still on the floor, though. It's back to Puisa somehow. Fresh 20 for the Bulls. Chineke rattles it home. She's been working on that part of her game. Much improved this year. First team always American Athletic Conference player is Chineke and was the leading scorer last year. This year it's Puisa. But only by .3 points in edge on Chineke. And Chineke has been able to add the uh, passing ability to her game to be able to set others up. And Puisis is a great target for her. 
River Baldwin, her first touches of the game. The FSU transfer misses. Physical rebound ends up in Ariel Wilson's hands. Pass forward to Chineke. And now they slow it down. Rito. Vanka Menjiadu lays it in. A lot of fakes there, a lot of deception from South Florida to take the lead back. Sanaya Rivers into the game for the first time. Pass over to Johnson, hit a three earlier, short on that one. We're going to see a big impact from the South Carolina transfer Rivers on this end of the floor, but Fanka Menjianu running 94 feet for the bucket. She's up to six. Now that's her advantage in that matchup with River Baldwin. River is going to have to be able to run with her up the floor. See, Rivers has a height advantage in that matchup with Chineke. There's a switch. Police is switched on to her. Now Jakia Brown-Turner guarded by Chineke. Inside to Baldwin. Big spin and a push shot off the back of the rim and out. Welcome everyone who is watching Pitt and Ball stay with the Cardinals picking up a big overtime win. Early on, it's unranked South Florida beating number eight NC State with the Hall of Famer Debbie Antonelli on Ben Shulman. There's a turnover for the pack. Out of the mid-quarter timeout, it's been all Bulls. South Florida has a team that can come in here and be a top 10 program. They've got great guard play. They've got rebounding inside. Led by their 6'4 center, Dulce Fancom Menjiadu. Jose Fernandez, the head coach, has played a challenging non conference schedule. And this three headed uh, monster, if you will, has the ability to win on the road. They are all very good in their roles. You mentioned that tough schedule, like it says down there fourth straight game versus a top 25 opponent. Johansson with her first shot of the game. There's Emma Johansson for three. First year player out of Sweden. 10-0 run for the Bulls. NC State's going to have to bring in a lot more energy on the defensive end because South Florida is running through their stuff. They are changing the pace of the game offensively with their acceleration through their action, and NC State's got to stay with them. Diamond Johnson penetrating. Contested lay-in good. Rutgers transfer makes a tough layup to end that 10-0 run. Diamond Johnson has changed her game a little bit this year. She leads the team in scoring. She played off the bench behind Reina Perez last year. But she answers what I call the three W's, Ben. Who to get the ball to, when, and where. She has a great understanding of NC State's personnel. Leading assist on the pack with four assists a game. Rito, the freshman, into the key, blocked away. Huge swap by Isaiah James. NC State can take the final shot of the quarter. Johnson driving left, kick, three from Collins, no good. Rebound goes to Brito, and that's the end of the first quarter. Early advantage for the Bulls. They are looking for their second ranked win in as many games here in Raleigh. ACC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Food Lion, official grocer of the ACC. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. The 83 team taught me about dreaming and the importance of dreams because nothing can happen if not first to dream. If you have a, someone with a dream, if you have a motivated person with a dream and a goal and a vision, if you have someone who never gives up, who has great hope, and that team taught me the persistence, the idea of never, ever quitting. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop fighting.
It's V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. This is game changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting V.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Here at Valvano Arena at Reynolds Coliseum on Kyao Court. NC State trying to fight back after the Diamond Johnson make. It's a one possession game. Kerry Yao and Jim Valvano were great friends. They both have separate 501c3s. The Kerry Yao Cancer Fund has helped contribute to saving lives. And this is a call for action for the Jimmy V. V.org, if you have a chance to donate money, please do so. 100% of your donation will go to fund research, and it's really important to help save the lives of people that are battling this horrible disease. Absolutely. NC State taking over. There was a 10-0 run from South Florida late in the first quarter, but the Pack now have scored the last four. Sanaya Rivers won the national title with South Carolina last year. Inside Hobby, double teamed. Pass to the corner deflected. Police just knocked it out of bounds, so it sticks with NC State. Very patient inside by Camille Hobby. Recognizes where the double came from and didn't panic. Isaiah James looking for her first points. Pass to Hobby deflected and intercepted. Daniela Gonzalez, the first year, making an impact. Weesis inside Fanka Mengiadu. Under the hoop, she's blocked by Hobby. And Diamond Johnson is doing a good job of getting to the glass and helping on the boards. Johnson pull up flush. Because she can do that. No outlet, sprint up the floor, run the floor hard and wide, and pull up and stick a 15-footer. She's got a game-high nine. Marina Asensio into the game. Spanish point guard. Sanaya Rivers putting a little bit more size and length on that Sammy Priestess matchup. She caused a big problem for Georgia's Alicia Lewis last game. A couple of massive blocks. Need to put it up. Priestess with five on the shot clock. Misses the runner. Good job of making Sammy Priestess put it on the floor. She is a hard person to defend because she moves so well without the ball. Sanaya Rivers, 2021 USA Today and Gatorade National High School Player of the Year. Here's Johnson with the floater. Good, she's at double digits, and we're just entering the second quarter. 8-0 run for the pack, led by Diamond Johnson. Good D on the other end by the pack, the rebound by Diamond. And then to pull up Jay, baby, right at the nail. Sticks it for NC State. It's V-Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. We welcome you back to ACC Network Women's Basketball presented by Food Lion. NC State leading South Florida by two and all six points in this second quarter have come from Wolfpack point guard Diamond Johnson. Because they've defended and they've kept South Florida for taking the ball out of the net. So they've been able to get in transition and they are excellent when they run the floor and you tilt the floor that way, especially led by Diamond on the top. Johnson with a game high, 11 points, five for eight from the floor. USF brings in some scoring with Priscilla Williams coming into the game, but Ariel Wilson, the point guard, hands it off to Chineke. Fanko Mengiadu recovers. Doesn't usually do this much dribbling. She's into the key and misses. I like the isolation of her trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. James needs to make a good decision here with the ball. Sanaya Rivers for three, off the mark, wide to the right. Three on two for the Bulls, they slow it down. Williams, the Syracuse transfer, pulls up and misses. Offensive board, Chineke, Bulls slow it down. They have dominated the offensive glass so far. Six offensive boards to zero for NC State, and Chineke headed to the line. See, with Sammy Priestess on the bench, Sanaya Rivers moves over to guard the next best scorer for South Florida, and that's Elena Chinecki. And she is very crafty off the 
bounce. There's a good look at Pleasis, their best three-point shooter. I think one of the best in the entire country moving without the ball. She puts pressure on your defense in other ways because she moves so well. Janike at the line, an 81% free throw shooter. Off the mark. She was the preseason AAC Conference Player of the Year and has really just been a dominant player her whole career. Now a senior with the Bulls, but has averaged double digits in every season she's played at South Florida. I mean, she can score right foot, left foot, left foot, wrong foot. She is so good around the rim. Four points today. Inside to Camille Hobby. Has a couple buckets herself. Double teamed on the baseline. Wilson came in, held ball, and that is sticking with State. However, they flip the possession arrow. So NC State knows that South Florida is bringing a double to the block. The last time Camille Hobby caught it on the block, they brought the double team. She made a patient play out of it. You got to move quicker on the perimeter to give her an outlet. Bounce pass to Isaiah James, plus the foul. Nice inbounds play from Westmore in the pack, who have opened up one of their largest leads so far. This is a tremendous cut to the basket. South Florida didn't look like they were organized defensively, and James makes them pay with an and one chance. First foul for the South Florida point guard, Ariel Wilson. And Isaiah James completes the three point play. Wilson carrying it up. Memphis transfer from Toronto, Ontario. Dundas specifically. Sanaya River sticking right to Sammy Priest's hip. You got a chaser over the top of every screening action, and they run a lot of combinations for her. Wilson turns it over. No. They say over and back. Now think of Mengiadu making the tip signal. I thought for sure that ball was tipped by someone from NC State, but they say no. Fourth turnover so far on the Bulls. Look at Priscilla Williams at 6-2, Garden. Little Diamond Johnson. What do you do when you get a big on you try to take him to the basket? She travels there. Priscilla Williams, a really interesting player for this USF team had a good freshman year at Syracuse two seasons ago, sat out last year with an injury, and now is playing her sixth game of the season for South Florida. Williams to Puisis, and that pass intercepted by Madison Hayes. Two on one, Hayes gets bumped and misses the layup, no foul call. If you're not gonna advance past the ball on a two on one, you better score it. Have Diamond Johnson, the game's leading scorer on the other side. But another strip here and a foul by Williams as the ball is on the floor. So Isaiah James is giving Westmore some quality minutes. She's getting a chance and she's been productive. She did turn it over the first time she touched it, but she's gotten a couple of deflections, scores on an out-of-bounds play and makes her free throw. Played only four minutes against Georgia last game, has already surpassed that in this contest. Well, you've got to earn it in practice. You have to earn your playing time in practice, and we're not in practice every day. Isaiah James last year was all ACC freshman team, sophomore out of Virginia Beach. Over to James with half the shot clock gone. Johnson pulls up and hits over Williams. I mean, I think she looked Priscilla Williams in the eye before she stuck it. That's five foot five against six two to get it to the largest lead so far today for NC State. Now you have to give her a little cushion because she can blow right by you. Williams drive in. Baseline floater no good, offensive board. Second chance no good again. No field goals yet in the quarter for South Florida. James speeding down the floor. Missed the layup with the left hand. Out of bounds, USF ball. Uh, again, James did everything right. 
She runs up the backside of a defender in transition, and Diamond just squares it up and says, bucket. With that three, Diamond Johnson has hit multiple triples in every game so far this season, even the game against Georgia when she went two for 11. I think people forget that her freshman year at Rutgers, she was a 50-40-90 player in a starting role with a big responsibility as a freshman. She is skilled offensively. Wilson around the screen. And Chineke missed it way too strong. Benka Menciadu swat it, 10 to shoot. Brito, open three. Missed that one too. Three chances for USF, but they could not put it in. Diamond Johnson stripped. And there, Madison Hayes looked like she was blocked. River Baldwin with the left hand. Her third chance is good, but Diamond Johnson is down on the floor. Immediately, the arena goes silent as North Carolina State's leader is clutching her right leg. And that right ankle did not go the way it was supposed to. So they're already without the services of Jada Boyd with an ankle issue, who has missed the last two games. Diamond trying to work it through. Just a tough sight for everyone here in Raleigh as they help Diamond Johnson off the floor. Okay, so now Westmore has gone right now from 10 players to eight players. He had talked about depth being an advantage to that. If Diamond is not available, as soon as we can get a report, we'll find out as they take her back over to the makeshift training table, or trainer's area, not training table. Some people think a training table is nutrition. It used to be that way. So with Johnson, at least not in the game now, who's taking over main ball handling when NC State gets the ball? Sonia Rivers is capable of running the point, and there is a package that NC State has with her on the top of the floor. Well, an early turnover forced by NC State out of the break. That's the seventh turnover already on USF. NC State dominating this quarter, up 14-1. There's Rivers. 6-1 at the point. Ransom point against Georgia in the last game. Shakia Brown-Turner probably takes on some of the scoring load more as well. Rivers fires a pass inside, but a blocking foul on the pass on Ariel Wilson. Second on Wilson, and it'll just be baseline inbounds here for NC State. Yeah, Mina Collins has the one-on-one -on -one there. She's got to score that but against a smaller four player in that matchup with Brito. Four points now, pass ahead and a foul. Rivers knocked over Puisis. See, that's where Sonia Rivers has got to know if she can get that tip or deflection. But you certainly don't want to pick up that cheap foul. First on Rivers. Just the third on the pack here, almost seven minutes into the quarter. Still no field goals in this quarter for USF. That will break the deadlock as Fanko Mengiadu spins away from Baldwin for her eighth points of the game. Now there's not a flopping rule in the women's game. It is a point of emphasis, but there's no penalty for it. And you see the officials just play on. Isaiah James pulls up. 
Lefty jumper rattles out, but an offensive board for Collins, saved right to Cheneke. Three on two, Puisis is open in the corner. Cheneke takes it herself and is stripped by Jakia Brown-Turner. Brown-Turner spinning the other way, missed her layup. Well, you had Mimi Collins on a post up. Rio attacking. She scores with the right four straight points for South Florida. That's the thing that South Florida does so well. They keep pressure on you with their transition game. You've got to match up quickly and build a wall. They love to run at you even from cold starts sometimes, from main buckets, from out of bounds plays. There's a block by Fanko Mengiati, her 14th of the year, swatting away Zania Rivers. There's a lot of players in the ACC that like to make plays with one hand. And when you do that, you might get some style points, but you really don't have control. And there's a great play by Rivers the Rivers other way. Rivers to be able to come the other way and make up for the mistakes she made on the other end. That's what you call moving on to the next play. Six points now for Mimi Collins off the Rivers pass. Jessica Timmons is waiting to check in for the pack. Inside, Fanko Mengiati looking for double digits. Offensive board, two misses. Jakia Brown, Turner, wide open, but couldn't finish the layup there. Nice move to get to the rim. Second chance for the pack with a minute left to go in the half. And this is where NC State really needs to run through their stuff offensively. Here comes the double. And Wilson stripped. It's going to be a foul on Baldwin. It's USF basketball. Wilson was clipped in the face by Baldwin after she knocked the ball loose. A lot of really good defensive play, though, for NC State, despite that recent foul. It's a quick hands, the length of Sanaya Rivers, and the nice delivery because Mimi Collins runs for a layup. USF trying to salvage this quarter. Puises, did she just lose the ball? They're saying that Rivers tipped it, but Rivers is pleading that she did not touch that basketball, and then it just fell out of Puises' hands. And the officials are going to come together here and discuss it. And it's going the other way. They say Puises lost it clean. No argument from the USF players. Oh, she definitely did. Janeke sticking with Jakia Brown Turner. They call a foul there as the hands got in on the hips and back of Turner. ACC PM with Mark Packer, Trey Boston, and Taylor Tannenbaum. They'll talk football, but we'll also have the latest from around the conference weekdays at 4 Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. the foul Jose Fernandez charged with a technical foul giving Jakia Brown Turner a chance at the line <laughs> Brown Turner 76 percent free throw shooter this year now has three points in the game Look in the top left corner, and there you can see the technical foul. Yeah, Coach Fernandez did not like something and had a few words with our official, Jeffrey Smith. Smith joined today by Joseph Vasily and Teresa Stuck. 
NC State going to hold for the pseudo final shot with maybe a chance to put it back on an offensive rebound. Sanaya Rivers taking over the point guard role after Diamond Johnson left the game. Rivers penetrating past Franco Mangiato. She lays it in. Running clock, five seconds to go. Wilson ahead to Puisis. Open look. And she stuck it. Right at the buzzer, USF with a little bit of a boost, but they trail by nine off a massive NC State second frame. That's why Sammy Puisis is on the top of the scouting report. Let's see what the status of Diamond Johnson will be for NC State. Otherwise, this is a mistake by the Wolfpack, giving her a free look to the bucket. Maybe something to get Puisis going. Her first three-pointer made of the game. We're going to take a break, but Kelsey Riggs and Muffet McGraw will be on the other side talking ACC teams in the AP Top Ten. It's V-Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. We welcome you back to ACC Network Women's Basketball presented by Food Lion from Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the home team, NC State, leading so far through one half with Deb Antonelli, the Hall of Famer. I'm Ben Schulman, and at the break, a big honor for you getting inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. It was awesome to see you out here on the floor of your alma mater and them getting to celebrate your great accomplishments. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's Boo Corrigan, the athletic director. What a great surprise it was for me. I had no idea. Uh, they put a really nice collage together. It's something that I will hang in my office at home and, and always have and uh, I'm so grateful for my incredible launching pad that NC State provided for me and it's really cool that I got to celebrate with so many NC State people here today. Really, Thank you. really fun ceremony. They surprised you a little bit. They eh? did. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. They caught me off guard. I was not ready for that, for and sure. Look at that mullet over there. That's pretty strong, isn't That's it? That's great. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. I might need to get me one of those. No, like you don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. We, uh, we had such a great experience here at NC State. I'm so fortunate that uh, Ken Yao picked me and and I got to play here for four years, and it was really a great experience. So it's good to be back home right here. Part great of the foundation home. of what's become such a dominant program, and they were dominant in that second quarter. They have definitely taken a big step out in front of South Florida so far. Well, all the credit goes to Wes Moore. He has done a fantastic job building an incredible environment here based on the product being the narrative. The product's really good here in Raleigh, and it's good in the ACC. And we're seeing a South Florida team that shot 29 they're not going to do that in the second half, and Westmore knows it. His team's got to continue to lock in defensively. They got to push the pace when they have options in transition, and they got to make sure that they find Sammy Puisis, who in the first half went two for five and hit that late three, which might get her going. Let's take a look at how NC State got to this first half lead. It was a back and forth first quarter, but Diamond Johnson took over in the second. Well, it was Diamond. Uh, she made the play. She made the read. She hit open shots. She pushed tempo. She got on the glass. And then she rolls her ankle. And when she rolls her ankle, she goes to the bench. And, and NC State does a good job of staying uh, separated from South Florida. As you see right there, the ankle. And uh, we do not have a status on uh, Diamond yet, but we will get it as soon as we can. NC State was up nine when Johnson came out. They remained up nine after, and their impeccable defense has led them through that first set. Uh, their ability to close out long on all the South Florida shooters has forced the South Florida shooters to put the ball on the floor. And that's what you want. You want them to put the ball on the floor and make plays off the bounce, not catch and shoot and spray it around in space. That was a good job defensively by West Moore's team on, in the first half. It was actually USF that had the first quarter lead thanks to Dulce Fanka Mengiadu, but that has completely flipped. And of course, the Diamond Johnson injury, like we mentioned, will be a massive part of how this game unfolds as we get into the second half. For South Florida, they're looking for their second win in a stretch of four straight ranked teams. NC State looking for what could be a big non-conference win. And 
a big win in their first game back at home in nearly a month. We were looking at some of the halftime stats, and one thing that really stuck out to you was the inefficient shooting of South Florida in the first half and how that trend is unlikely to continue. Well, this is a team that shoots 45% from the floor. They shot 29 in the first half. I don't expect them to shoot 29% in the second. So you better make sure that you follow the scout if you're NC State defensively. And I think you've got to move the ball better if you're South Florida. Air ball for Chineke, but an offensive board. Leading score for South Florida with eight in the first half. Fanko Menjiadu is fouled. These are the three that you're expecting to score. Banco Mengiadu has been really effective, but even Puisas with the two makes, one of them was the heave at the end of the half. Well, these are three of their four players that average in double figures, and I think NC State did an excellent job in the first half on Sammy Puisas. When it, Mengiadu is a one-on-one -on -one difficult matchup for the front line of NC State, and you can see that Jose Fernandez is trying to feature her early. Not sure they want her dribbling that far away from the net, though. Nearly turned it over. Here's Burrito with the left. That's good. Strong game for Carla Burrito. Seven points for the first year out of Las Palmas, Spain. So here's the versatility of what Sonia Rivers can do at the point at 6-1. Rivers at the point with Johnson out. She turns around and misses the jumper. She is still looking to score a little bit more only had two points in the first half Cheneke is spinning and that one is swatted away they say it's last touch off of usf that she just lost it out of bounds nc state takes over elena Cheneke averaging nearly 17 points per game but only has four so far in this one Chakia brown turner Back to Madison Hayes. Camille Hobby working to try to get in position. There she goes. A lot of pass wide open. She's going to the line. You know, Camille Hobby is a player that we should celebrate. She's getting ready to graduate on Friday with her undergraduate degree. But in her freshman year, she didn't play a lot of minutes, yet she'd be the first person out to practice on game day to get warmed up. Now she's a senior, she stayed, she played behind one of the all-time greats in Elisa Kunain in NC State history, and she's getting rewarded this year with all of her hard work, because she's getting major playing time because she stuck through some of the adversity of not getting a chance to play 25 minutes a game. And she was a big prospect coming out of high school, 2019 Florida Miss Basketball and was willing to put in the time on the bench. No, she's good. And because she worked on her game, she kept the faith, and she believed that she could be a player at this level, and she certainly has proven that this year. Already has scored in double figures five times this year, matching her total from all of last year. Reverse layup from Fanco Mengianu, no good. I mean, Jose Fernandez should keep featuring that matchup because I think Dulce has just got to make those plays. She's getting good shots. And Jakia Brown Turner quickly on Sammy Pusis up the floor. Janeke with the left. Second field goal for her. Sanaya so, Rivers, Ben, is the younger sister of a great player here at NC State, Nana Rivers. Sanaya from North Carolina, originally went to South Carolina, but transferred after last year. Miss from Jakia Brown Turner and an over the back foul. We're getting Madison Hayes on that one, I believe. For Rivers, the thought is that she's breaking in this year, but in the next couple of years, she could be the feature player here for NC State. Chineke around her, righty layup is good. Elena Chineke is starting to heat up. Chineke is so good at rejecting that screen and takes a straight line drive to the basket. She's really crafty in and around the key. Hobby pulls up. No good. Some momentum here for South Florida. Down nine to start the half and cut that to five. This is where Jose Fernandez is excellent. He's a terrific play caller when his offense is in front of his bench. 
Breezes misses, nice rebound. And he is dialing up offense to get great shots. They have not made them. And NC State's got to keep digging in and keep chasing Sandy Puisa. Stay on her hip. Puisa is only five points today. Leading scorer averages 17 points per game for this South Florida team. Still no Diamond Johnson. Rolled her ankle in the first half. She's the leading scorer for North Carolina State. You got to throw it in there. There's a mismatch. Mimi Collins. Uses it to get to the line. Drew some contact from Carla Burrito. The first year being helped up by her teammates. And one of the things that NC State has with Mimi Collins is tremendous toughness. She's the kind of player that you hate to go against, but you love playing with because you know exactly what she's going to do. She's going to fight for position in, in the paint. She's going to fight on the glass. She also has the capability of making a three once in a while. Saturday on ACC Network and the ESPN app, our college basketball doubleheader starts at 1 Eastern with Pitt hosting North Florida. Then Cornell takes the 50-mile drive up Route 11 to square off against Syracuse. The Orange have won the last 41 against the Big Red, dating back to 1969. Then come Mengiatu with the left, no good. And see, right now, NC State doesn't need to bring help to that matchup. Hey, Hobby's been handling Dulce inside on a one-on-one. -on -one. Hobby from range missed the long two. And that allows NC State to stay on shooters on the perimeter. Wilson penetrating to Puisis. And now Chineke. Rivers is drawing her. She blocks her away. A defensive menace, Sanaya Rivers with her second block of the game. But it's just better defense right here by Sanaya. She got beat the last time. This time she says, no way you're going to beat me to the basket. Already six blocks today for NC State. They average fewer than five a game. Van Komenjiadu versus Hobby. Turn around no good. Just like you said, Hobby standing tall. And Giotto, four for 11 on the inside. Sanaya Rivers inside, kick out Mimi Collins three. No good. USF had a lot of success against Texas when they got out and ran off rebounds. A little bit slower here, working in the half court. I think NC State's doing a really good job of getting back in transition. Creases for three, no good. See, the length of Rivers is always lurking in that matchup with Puisis, even though she goes over top of that action. Puisis a 38% three-point shooter, one for three today. Rivers over Puisis, yes! Yeah, Sanaya Rivers definitely playing with some confidence. She told me today in shoot-around that she wanted to guard Sammy Puisis. She has equaled her in points. They both have five, and Rivers the main point guard right now. Reverse layup, high off glass, no good by Chineke. Rivers around Chineke. Kicks to the corner, open three, Brown Turner. No good. Fight for the rebound, Chineke comes up with it. Wilson penetrates and kicks. Burritos hit two threes today, passes that one up for a nice lay-in. What a decision by Burrito. She has been solid. She's an undersized four at 5'11", and she's only 17 years old. Leading the Bulls right now with nine points, but she has played a couple years pro in the Spanish Canary Islands in the top Spanish Women's League. Brown Turner, contested three is good. Largest lead of the second half for NC State, they're up 10. Chineke baseline, she responds. 
It's been a big third quarter for Chineke. Now in double digits. Rivers around the screen, pull up is blocked, and it's taken away two on one. Ariel Wilson speeding down the lane, layup rolls in. First points of the day for the Memphis transfer. Yeah, NC State is stuck with the ball on top of the floor, and this is where you need, miss Diamond Johnson. You know, Sonia Rivers can play the point, but she's not the natural point guard. No update on Johnson yet, and I don't see her at least on the bench. A nice contested lane from Brown Turner. Well, that's what Jakea Brown Turner needs to do. Hits the three, then takes her defender inside with that big frame. She's going to really need to come alive here to be able to separate. Brown Turner averaging 11 points per game this year. Second leading scorer on NC State behind Johnson. There's Chineke. She's got a dozen. That's three consecutive layups right through the NC State defense. Chineke up to 12, now 5 of 13 from the floor. At one point, 1 for 7. So she's made four of the last six. Timmons, Baldwin, and James waiting to check in for the Wolfpack. Gonzalez waiting to check in for USF. Slight advantage this quarter for the Bulls. Only four to shoot. Hayes pulls up baseline, it rattles out. Hobby offensive board, she'll head to the line. What a big rebound. Only the third offensive rebound of the game for NC State, but it doesn't matter. They're up by six, looking for a big non-con win. We welcome you back to ACC Network Women's Basketball presented by Food Lion. And now it's time for Food Lions, Food for Thought. Well, Sammy Puisis is tough to defend and is one of the best players I've seen in a very long time moving without the ball. Look at the mileage that she puts in per quarter per game. She is 3.73 miles per game. The average NBA player is two and a half. She is running a mile and a quarter more than what you see in an NBA game with less time. Eight fewer minutes in the game, and yet 150% of the output of an NBA player. And maybe all the more impressive then that NC State has limited her to five points. Well, she's two for seven from the floor, and she was definitely on the top of the scouting report. She leads them in scoring with Chineke, and you have to find oh Sammy Prusis because she can get hot in a hurry. Hit five threes in the Texas Nixon, line. The defensive game plan on her does not change until the horn sounds at the end. She's that good and that capable, and I love the way she's rebuilt her game since her time at Florida State. She's changed her body a little bit. She's more conditioned. She's durable. Sammy Puisis has definitely made herself a really good college basketball player. Her former Florida State teammate River Baldwin just checked in. Here's a steal for Jessica Timmons. Trying to step over her defender and scores! Without Jada Boyd and without Diamond Johnson, it's a chance for James and Timmons to get extended minutes. Timmons doing a good job right here defensively, quick hands and then finishing with contact. Drew the foul against the finish first year, Jeanette Arneo. Three-point play completed. And now the largest lead of the half for NC State, 11 points. You cannot have enough guards in college basketball. Timmons and James have a chance to really help elevate NC State through conference play. Timmons a sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Janeke leading the Bulls in scoring, down to Fanko Mengianu. One more pass just behind a cutting Daniela Gonzalez. Well, Dulce Fanko Mengianu has had a tough day. And Jose Fernandez has gotten her the ball where she has been effective and she's capable. She shoots 61% from the floor. It's ninth in the nation. Oh, excuse me, her rebounding is ninth in the nation. Today only shooting 33 from the floor. Baldwin inside missed. And another rebound for Fanka Mengiata, who does have 14 on the day. Chineke fouled as she was going to the rim. They're going to say it's a foul on the floor. See, this is Chineke's game. Rebound, and unless you see two shoulders, two hips, 
in front of you. You take it all the way to the basket. She has been much more aggressive in the second half. NC State's got to be careful here and look for Chineke to get it back. Into Wilson, Chineke under the bucket. Instead, they go to Precious. Now they run a screen to get into Chineke for three. Good! Hey, I think you're in the Hall of Fame for a reason. <laughs> you get lucky once in a while if you watch enough game. 15 points for Elena Chineke. And NC State has not been able to separate. I, mean, I, I don't want to see them wait too late here to get into this action. They did have the lead up at 11 at one point, but USF continuing to get it back to single digits. Rivers holding, now Collins. Has to hoist it up, contested three, no good. See Ben, they waited too long, and it took too long to get in the action, especially when you don't have your natural point guard on the top of the floor. And Wes Moore is as good as anyone in preparing for situations. Quite the situation coming up a fourth quarter without Diamond Johnson, we think. We'll see if NC State can hold on. Underdog South Florida staying in the game right now thanks to 11 third quarter points from Elena Chineke. She's been a hard driver. She is looking to get to the paint. She has been very good off the bounce and then this out of bounds play, you can't come with a short closeout. You've got to get a hand up. She reads the second level so good and she's also very good at rejecting the screen. So you have to play her honest. South Florida won that third quarter by one point, and there's an early turnover. That back door was not available. Oh, I'm surprised she didn't shoot that. But she's going to shoot this one. And she gets the bounce. Shooter's roll is eventually going to come seven points now for Sammy Puisa. So, what were you talking about in the break, Ben? 47% from South Florida from the floor in the third quarter. Big improvement. And they're starting to heat up. Shot under 30% in the first half. Jessica Timmins to River Baldwin, who's fouled on the entry pass. That's the third on Dulce Fanca Mengiadu. She had to play the final eight minutes of their last game with four fouls on her, and it clearly affected her defense inside. Well, I don't think Jose Fernandez wants to take her out because you got to trust her. You know, she's a senior. She knows what she's supposed to do, and you, you don't change your aggressiveness. You just don't try to block shots or rotate and draw a charge. You just play solid. Inside to Baldwin. Dulce guarding her. A couple of bumps, but no foul, and Baldwin lays it in. That's a really good post move inside by the 6'5 transfer, River Baldwin. We mentioned Priestess changing her game a little bit from Florida State. You talked about before the game, too, that Baldwin has changed her game and her body a little bit from Florida State. She's got in the ball. Fanka Menjiadu has it poked away, saves it back. Somehow still in South Florida. They've got to hoist it. It's poked away. There's a steal for Isaiah James. She lost the ball. And it's going back to South Florida. Ariel Wilson, four on three for the Bulls the other way. Fanka Menjiadu spins. Lays it up, no good. Second chance, she's fouled and headed to the line. You know, I have referenced Franco Mangiato as what I would call the Oscar Sheepway of the women's game. She's got 15 rebounds to start the fourth quarter. And once again, we do have an emphasis for flopping, but we don't have a penalty for it, and the officials play on. Interesting, they call that a foul on the floor. Quick pass in, Chineke might have been tipped, but the ball didn't get there anyway. Fans let her know as Timmons takes it over now. Screen knocks over Wilson. Baldwin gets it on the roll, can test, and nice defense without fouling by fans of right. Build a wall inside and make a player score over you. Daniela Gonzalez from three, short. Physical rebound for Sammy Puisis. Benko Mangiadu with the right through contact. No foul, no bucket, and a foul on the rebound. Think they're going to get Chineke there. 
Uh, there's the comparison I'm talking about. Look how close the numbers are. And I wish I could come up with a female player that I think in the game right now rebounds like that with that fire and that passion on the glass. Is Boston a, a comparison she, at all? She's not as long and she's not as thick below as Menjiagu is, but she certainly is a tremendous, I'm not saying she's not a rebounder, I'm just talking about Boston has other responsibilities. Menjiadu is supposed to rebound, and she does it like Sheepway. She rebounds every time. She goes to the glass every time. She's stealing possessions with her rebounding ability. Yeah, I'm going back to, like, Katrina McClain kind of rebounding. Some people might say Rebecca Brunson in the WNBA rebounding. Shakia Brown-Turner fouled there by Chineke. The offensive rebounding battle has gone way in the favor of South Florida, despite the fact they're trailing 14 offensive boards to only three for the pack. And it's not just Vanka Mengiato. She has five offensive boards, but there are others that are contributing as well. Jakia Brown-Turner, nice step through, and she'll get the bounce. Double figures for Jakia Brown-Turner. What Jose Fernandez wants to do here is you can't trade baskets and you want to be able to put some game pressure on NC State to have them have to make shots under duress. And I'm not talking about just defensive duress, I mean game on the line. Puisis misses the three there. Hard for USF to get going with Puisis not in rhythm. Now one for four from range. And there's Diamond Johnson who will not be available for the remainder of the game. Turned her ankle in the second quarter after she led NC State with 14 points. She was on her way to a big game. Six for 10 from the floor and made great decisions with the ball. Turn around for Collins, no good. Good to see Johnson on the bench, smiling at least. They had to help her off the floor. Not good for NC State to see Jada Boyd and Diamond Johnson sitting over there next to each other. Puisis pulls up and hits. Now nine points for Sammy Puisis. Now if NC State can hang on here and win this game, I know Wes Moore is going to give a lot of credit to his bench for the way they've performed, if they can pull it out. It would be two big shorthanded wins in a row. It would be the talented Georgia team a couple days ago. Steal for Puisis. She's fouled in transition. Now this is a South Florida team with great maturity, good understanding of time and score. Played a challenging non-conference schedule to prepare themselves for this situation. And certainly West Moore has played a really hard non-conference uh, non schedule as well. If you're USF, you're in a pretty good spot right now. Only down eight as the underdog here against a top 10 team on the road. Yeah, but I think South Florida is a ranked team, so I look at them and have expectation for them to be in this position. Did receive votes this past week. Janeka only has taken one shot this quarter, pulls up, and misses there. She had 11 third quarter points. Into Baldwin, fumbled the pass, although she had position to lay it in. Ninth turnover of the day for NC State, who still leads that turnover battle. 13 giveaways the other way for South Florida. And Baldwin going to come out. Camille Hobby back in. Wilson dribbling over half. South Florida wants to talk about it with 5.34 to go. Hanging in the game, but Jose Fernandez's team needs to make a push if South Florida is going to try and pick up the upset. Loaded ACC slate today, a ton of big non-conference games, including a big win for the Louisville Cardinals. Well, they needed to get back on track, and that's a good win in a rivalry game over there in Lexington. And, you know, North Carolina continues to play well. They're in the top 10, and Virginia Tech has a really good team. They've got Notre Dame coming up soon. Of course, coming up right after us, get to see Katie Meyer in the Miami Hurricanes. Destiny Harden. That should be 
a lot of fun in the Sunshine State here. A turnover forced by Madison Hayes, sprinting to the hoop, takes some contact from Precis. She will add to the line. Hey, that is a flat lateral pass that allows Hayes to get up the line and make the play. Watch this steal right here. Precis just makes a hard foul to make her earn it at the free throw line. We've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This winter, ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic or take a video, tag it with the hashtag, all the devotion, and post it to your social. You might just see it on ACC Network. We get to do that too? All the devotion? We can, yeah. yeah, all right. Maybe a post game selfie. Chineke with 15, leading the Bulls. Rito for three. No good. Board up for grabs, but Collins claims it. Sanaya Rivers has handled the point guard responsibilities pretty well here without Diamond Johnson. No turnovers for Rivers, three assists. Skip pass to Hobby. Pulls up for a deep two, hits it. And Camille Hobby has a tremendous face-up game. He is really showing it off here in a matchup against a taller defender. Now 10 points for Hobby. Her six double-digit games this season, the most she's ever had in a single season. Panko Mengiadu fouled as Shakia Brown-Turner wanted to steal and a run out. NC State starting to pull away. They're looking for their ninth win of the year at home. ACC Network Women's Basketball presented by Food Line, official grocer of the ACC. Only four minutes, 22 seconds remain. NC State looking for a big victory without two of its top players, Jada Boyd and Diamond Johnson, not in the game today. Yet the number eight Wolfpack up by 12. That one, was it tipped? Yes, it was, says official Joseph Vasili, so it sticks with South Florida. Bulls have really struggled in this fourth quarter after a strong third. They are two for ten from the floor. They've hit one of their last nine field goals this quarter. Reeses pulls up. She can't hit. Another offensive board for the Bulls, though. They're dominating the glass. Plus 11. Chineke a little bit off the mark as well. She missed wide right. Here come the pack. Are we late enough in the game where you might want to start stretching out possessions a little bit? I, I don't think that's a good thing for NC State as we've seen them try to use the, the clock and it, I think they've lost some of their aggressiveness. This is not a time when you want to do that. They're doubling Rivers, only five to shoot. She goes to the corner, now a pass in is tipped away. Hobby with the turnaround blocked. Every time they go late or delay into the shot clock, they don't get a good look. What a pass by Ariel Wilson with one hand up to Carla Brito. Well, I think NC State needs to keep the pace right here because you don't have a natural point guard on the top of the floor. So Wes Moore, who's typically the point guard over there on the sideline when his offense is in front of him, is doing double duty. Offensive foul. Wilson, the starting point guard on the other side with a massive defensive play. Look at the pass up the floor by Wilson and the finish by Brito. Back-to-back -back mistakes by NC State here could give South Florida some momentum. If they're going to make a push, they need to do it now. Wilson has not scored today, but has five rebounds, four assists. Puises, looking for double digits, is fouled going to the hoop. And that's going to be two free throws for Sammy Puisis. That'll match the total for the rest of the game. Only two free throws total today for South Florida. NC State has done a good job of keeping them off the free throw line, but Puisis is 26 for 26 on the season, so you don't expect her to miss. 
Saturday on ACC Network and the ESPN app, our college basketball doubleheader starts at 1 Eastern with Pitt hosting North Florida. Then Cornell takes the 50-mile drive up Route 11 to square off against Syracuse. The Orange have won the last 41 against the Big Red, dating back to 1969. Puisis hits on both to stay perfect from the line this year. Jakia Brown Turner for three, and that might be a dagger. That's a great set by Wes Moore. Drive baseline, you reject the screen, you re-screen, and the shooter comes around. I call that America's play because everybody runs it. And for Jakia Brown Turner, now 13 points off that well set up play by Moore. Second leading score to Diamond Johnson. Especially after not scoring in the Georgia game, she's come back big here this afternoon in Raleigh. Last touch on that rebound by NC State. Jakia Brown Turner, a couple seasons ago, first team all ACC, and we're starting to see some of that again here in this game. I think when she revs up her engine and she plays both sides of the ball, I think she is a really tough check in the league. Puises, quick trigger three, no good. Time starting to run out here for the Bulls, down 11 under two minutes to go. Team, um, South Florida's not a team that can press and trap, and you don't want to open up the floor against NC State and allow their transition game. Now, I'm, I'm on the same set, like run the same thing for Jakia Brown Turner. It looks like they're definitely starting to kill some clock now as Brown Turner has dribbled 25 seconds of the shot clock away. Her pull up, no good. Conversely, South Florida speeding down the floor. Chineke lays it in. She's up to a game high 17. I think you have to have a feel for tempo and personnel, and now you see Chineke commit the foul, try to extend the game, and I'm going to say this because I say it all the time. I wish we had the one-and-one one in the women's game. Rivers is a good player to send to the line one-and-one one or two shots because she's a 50% free throw shooter this year, seven for 14. That was the fourth foul, though, on Chineke. Big free throw to make it a 10-point game. Westmore moving his bigs out of the key. He wants everyone back so that USF can't run out and transition. Second one rolls out. Carla Brito with pace to Ariel Wilson. They want to find Priestess for three. Here it is. It's good. That is a beautiful set. And the acceleration and the flare by Priestess sets it up perfectly. Jose Fernandez knows how to manage the end of the game. Eight seconds it took from the rebound to the three. And now South Florida only down by seven. Sammy Puis has just hit her first three of the second half, and with South Florida down and limited time, they'll need a couple more threes likely from Puis if they're going to get back in the game. Well, she's certainly not, you're not changing what you do with the scouting report on her, but that was a great set by South Florida to get her an open look. Now the press, and it's beat by the inbounds pass. Rivers missed the land, but sticks with it for the second chance. Well, the one thing you can't do is get beat over the top. That's why South Florida doesn't like to press. Reeses cutting in, lost the basketball. Going the other way, Hayes. Bounce to Jakia Brown, Turner, layup no good. And USF going the other way. They have numbers four on two. To the corner, Chineke. Bulls looking for a three, Chineke penetrates, pass tipped, Wilson has it. Puisis wants to hoist, Brito can do it too, she's blocked by Rivers. Shot clock turned off. Brito trying to foul there, but no call. And now they will get the foul. Now Jose Fernandez was trying to wave it off. You know, Jose is going to go back and look at the film and say, wow, we got shots. We didn't make them. Okay, and Westmore is going to go, wow, we survived at home against a great push by South Florida with two starters out with injury. It's the second game in a row they've been shorthanded against a capable opponent. And they have come up big once again. 
It's kind of a new era of NC State basketball with Elisa Kunain and others no longer here. And it looks like the Wolfpack are set up for success going forward. Another one for two for Rivers, and Fernandez calls timeout. Well, he wants to advance the ball, run a play. Big win for the Wolfpack, and some more big games coming up for NC State. They start conference play with a couple of home games, and then they'll go on the road to Syracuse on the first. It's an improved Syracuse team over last year. Duke and Syracuse, some tests for them before they take on some of the titans of the ACC coming up in mid-January and February. Well, I don't think there's any easy night in the league. Uh, you know, with a preseason with five teams in the top 15 and you see more teams in the top 10, it, it's, it's a challenging, challenging league. With Notre Dame and North Carolina and NC State, Louisville bouncing back tonight, and they're going to be there at the end. When you take a look at the teams that are in the AP Top 25, these teams are all in the top eight. I mean, this is how hard the league is this year. It's one of the best times I think the league has experienced. we got to go all the way back to like 06, 07, or 05, those years, when I think there's been this much parity in the ACC. South Florida trying to make it close here with 15 seconds to go. NC State with a great day from its bench. 19 bench points from five different players have helped them. Fanka Menjiadu gets into double figures, so she'll end this game with a double-double. 10 points, 17 rebounds. Rivers looking to dribble it out. And USF going to sag off a big win for NC State without two starters for most of this game. They weathered the storm to beat a talented South Florida Bulls team. This is when you take a deep breath and you go, wow, we survived it because they did a great job defensively on Sammy Puisis all game long. Dolce had, a, had some troubles scoring around the rim. She went five for 15, although she did have 17 rebounds. You knew those were two things that you had to be able to survive. Puisis shooting and Dolce on the inside. A great game from NC State all around. We appreciate you tuning in today for our fantastic crew and the Hall of Famer, Demi Antonelli. I'm Ben Schulman. NC State improves to 9-1. and one. A nice welcome home at last. And even without Diamond Johnson, managed to beat the Bulls by eight points. We are done, but the ACC slate is far from over. Coming up next, all access, then more hoops here on the ACC Network. Stick with us.